Another week of comics are in the books. Welcome on in, everybody. Alex, this is Graphic Novel Collector, and today I'm going to be giving you my pull list review. If you enjoy comic books and graphic novels, you like seeing reviews, top 10 videos, and deep dives into different creators, this is the channel for you, but I don't want to waste any of your time. Let's jump into these reviews because this week was a huge week. First up, we have Ultimate Spider-Man issue number nine by Jonathan Hickman, Marco Cicchetto, and the colors by Matthew Wilson. Holy smokes. Before I jump into the story on this one, first off, I want to say Ultimate Spider-Man and... Jonathan Hickman and Chichetto are absolutely knocking it out of the park with this series so far. If you like superheroes, especially if you're a Marvel fan, you have to check out this series. It is giving us not necessarily, a can obviously it's not in the 616 universe, but it is giving us an amazing Peter Parker Spider-Man story that we just haven't got in a really long time, and we're certainly not getting in Amazing Spider-Man. And I'm not going to talk smack on that run, but if you've read any of it, you know it's not been great. But Ultimate Spider-Man is great, and holy smoke, let me show you some of the interiors here. The story in issue number nine kicks off with J. Jonah Jameson and Uncle Ben celebrating the success of their new paper their new newspaper their news outlet called the paper and of course they are writing the success off the back of peter parker's photography photos of who you guessed it spider-man and as you can see the art by chichetto is on point the color is great in here as well and mj being the social media expert that she is in this universe she uh she's helping them do some great things and it is told to us that they are going to surpass the daily bugle in uh subscription so it's like a subscription base and then from that scene we cut to harry osborne and peter parker on their way to go see dr otto and what they're doing in this scene here is they're getting otto to kind of download some firmware for their suits and re-upload. Uh, re but we did see the freaking Iron Spider. And funny enough, Peter Parker no serves the idea of using it, and he's just using the spandex suit that Tony Stark got him in the very first issue. But uh, yeah, they also get encountered by a brand new villain named... Black Cat. <laughs> I, won't, I, I don't even know if I want to show you because it's kind of a spoiler. But they do actually... We are starting to see the seeds of dissent, the seeds of deception between Harry and Peter. And it is classic Hickman. I am a fan of Jonathan Hickman, generally speaking. But sometimes I do believe that he kind of gets in his own way sometimes and he just it goes on exposition dumps and worries too much about the world building that is not the case though inside the pages of ultimate x-men thus far and i've really really enjoyed it but we are starting to do the hickman thing and honestly when hickman does these things where he plants seeds to later be uh you know revealed later on in the story in the arc uh it's it's masterful He's one of the best at doing it in the business. And when Hickman is at his best, he is a top-tier creator. But Ultimate Spider-Man, if you're not reading it, you got to. You should be reading it. Other than maybe Transformers, Ultimate Spider-Man might be my best ongoing, my favorite ongoing comic book of the year thus far. Next up, we have Frankenstein. This is, of course, Universal Monsters by Michael Walsh and Tony Marie Griffin. This is issue number two. This book is awesome. This is, of course, by Imogen Skybound. And holy smoke, the colorist, Tony, Lee, Tony Marie Griffin, the writer, artist, and cover artist is Michael Walsh. And I absolutely love the Mignola 
art vibes in here and the color by Tony Marie Griffin honestly is extremely monochromatic and I absolutely love it. We see Fritz, the uh, basically Igor of this version of this story is he, he He's uh he's messing up here and holy smokes we we see some things happening they get a new brain from a poor unfortunate soul and of course if you've been reading this book you know that there is a small child involved which one of the body pieces of this Frankenstein is actually this monster Frankenstein obviously not the 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 person but we see the little boy in this one uh, witnessing some pretty terrible things and Fritz and Dr. Frankenstein have two other people show up to the mansion or you know to the to the laboratory and we get the classic it's alive it's alive and it's so awesome dude this story is so sick if even if you're not a fan of Frankenstein which I'm not a huge universal horrors monster you know things but uh I'm really enjoying it. This, it is very, very solid storytelling, solid comic book storytelling. And I do think that Michael Walsh has an excellent understanding of visual storytelling. I love, love, love the panel layout, the page layout. It's absolutely a gorgeous book and you should definitely be reading it. I think if I would had to grade this, it, it would be a four in my book, at least for this issue number two. And uh, yeah, I really like the first one. Really enjoying the second one. This is a great series thus far. Next up, we have Feral Part 6 by Tony Fleece, Trish Forstner, and Tone Rodriguez. This is the sixth issue in this series. And oh boy, this is a tearjerker. If you are a huge animal or pet lover this might this series just might not be for you um but we have the kitty in this entire episode this entire issue rather is all in first person and it is a heart wrencher you will fly through this thing so as you can see in first person but oh my gosh this poor little kitty cat there's a huge if you don't know there's a huge rabies outbreak and not only are it's kind of like a zombie movie, right? And not only are the the, peop, the other animals with rabies you got to look out for, so the other zombies, but you also have to look out for the other cats and people. There's humans in this that are basically told to kill any animal, any pet they see within this radius. They, they got it. They, they've been told to kill him. And holy smokes, there's some brutal, brutal stuff. I'm not going to get into it too much because I know that people are very sensitive uh, about, about, you know, animal violence and things like that. If you are, uh, you know, triggered by that or sensitive to that in any way, definitely don't read this book. It is not for you. But if you enjoy Tony Fleece's uh, other works, you're going to enjoy Feral. Part six was absolutely brutal and absolutely heartbreaking. We're telling such a dynamic story through the eyes, literally through the eyes of kitty cats. It's amazing what Tony Fleece is doing with this series, and I'm absolutely enjoying it. Uh, yeah, the series is great. I don't know, a 3.5 or a 4, and this is by, of course, Image Comics. Next up, we have Stand Still, issue two. This is issue two of eight by Lee Longridge and Andrew Robinson. And holy smokes, this book feels like a manga. It is awesome. The premise behind it, if you don't know, a basically a stopwatch that can stop time has been stolen from the Pentagon or somebody may, we don't know, the, the main protagonist in this story uh, is has this watch and here he is. He's going around and basically we're trying to decide why this person wants, obviously, if you can pause time, you can accomplish a lot of things, right? You could become a millionaire in the literally the blink of an eye. Um, and in this episode, in this issue, we are following him and he goes to this nightclub 
talks with all these assassins, puts a fat chunk of money on the table and says, basically, anybody who, who kills me gets this money, but here's the twist. I can ki try and kill you back. And we get an absolutely amazing uh, car chase scene. It's actually one of the best chase scenes I've seen in comics. And there's a hilarious part where, here, I'm trying to get to it, where the person is shooting at him. And because he can stop time, he shows up. Look, right here. <laughs> He's like, and this might be a little too spoilery, but I just wanted to show this. Look at that. He shows up on the motorcycle next to him because he paused time and was like, hey there. Hey, beautiful, is actually what he says. But as you can see, the page layout here is like a manga. You, this is a quick read. This is a quick read. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six panels across two pages on a lot of these. And But I'm loving this. This was a book that I, I wasn't even on my radar, right? And then I read the first issue. I uh, I absolutely loved it, and second issue improves on it and is starting to expand the world. We're starting to see two other characters who are basically trying to find the person who has the watch, and basically are going to take them out because they if they don't, then they're probably going to get taken out by them. So. Kind of a uh, spy versus spy kind of thing going on here, and I'm absolutely loving it. Stand still is awesome. Image Comics, it, issue two of eight, so very short series, but I'm loving it. Next up, we have the Uncanny X-Men issue number three by Gail Simone. Uh, we also have David Marquez on the art, and the colorist is Matthew Wilson, and holy smokes. I'm absolutely loving this series. This was a little bit of a slower issue, but in a good way, in a very good way. A lot of X-Men comics, and especially the first two issues of Uncanny X-Men, were all action, all punchy, punchy, no talky, talky, as I said in a previous video. But uh, yeah, it, it's excellent. Uh, we're starting to see who... Uh, well, it's on the first page. Uh, Professor X is the prisoner at the school for gifted children but we cut to rogue and wolverine having breakfast and we just got introduced to the outsiders it's basically these four young mutants and well one of them's not a mutant apparently but um these four young kids and surprise surprise wolverine's gotta go and we kind of follow they have a conversation of why why he's leaving he doesn't really explain himself we learn in the last couple pages why um but we get introduced to our friend the elf yeah that's right nightcrawler is in this ep issue and holy smokes he's basically training all of the new mutants all the four young folks and it's awesome i'm absolutely loving this gail simone understands what makes a good X-Men comic, in my opinion. She's absolutely crushing it. And with Marquez, they're telling a great story so far. I'm really liking it. And a lot of the other X-Men stuff just did not interest me. And historically, I'm a pretty big X-Men fan. And uh, yeah, this is the first From the Ashes title that I've really been able to latch on to. And I've really enjoyed uh, Uncanny X-Men. I'd say this is probably about a 3.5 or a 4 to me. Um, Catch the Elf. They literally paid, played Catch the Elf. It was awesome. I'm really enjoying this. And the last couple pages are awesome. And, oh, man, we're starting to really ratchet up what is happening in the subplots of the, of the Uncanny X-Men. And last but certainly not least, we have Wolverine Revenge. I did get the Red Band edition because why wouldn't you? But first off, I hate the Red Band stuff. Like, just just release it as a max series or something like we literally got one extra page and it wasn't it was it was a great page but from a story standpoint it didn't really add anything but we are seeing here wolverine uh start to get his revenge and in the first couple panels he's talking to nick fury and then we have a amazing reveal and i'll just show it to you because it is the second page and look at this just countless uh just Oh my gosh, look at all of those coffins there. 
and holy smoke it it, it kind of got me a little emotional to think like this is the fallout from this big emp or you know i don't really know what happened magneto did something and a lot of people died and if you read the first issue you know that cap died <laughs> and basically everybody he went on the mission in the first issue with died because they implanted bombs in their chests or what it was insane um but wolverine's out on a mission now i'm really loving this this is of course by jonathan hickman this is his second book of the week uh greg capullo townsend so i'm loving this obviously greg capullo this is apparently his very last ongoing series ever in his career so i'm really really excited um he links up with a couple of other mutants forge and they're trying to dig up look at that they're digging up magneto's helmet and he uses it later in the story and holy smokes uh if you like wolverine unhinged and going berserk mode and just straight up murking people wolverine revenge is for you capullo's the goat i mean he's one of the greatest of all times in my opinion on on the uh pencils and it's absolutely great i'm loving it loving it loving it hickman is letting him do his thing this is another great example of a hickman book where he's not getting in his way and he's not bogging it down with exposition dumps or too much world building he's just basically writing a solid good wolverine story for greg capullo to go out on and that's kind of just what i wanted for this series wolverine revenge a solid three in my opinion i will definitely be picking up the next copy but there you have it everybody that is what i picked up this week i am super interested though to know what you picked up from your local comic shop and again i'm alex this is graphic novel collector if you like weekly new comic book day stuff also top 10 videos and deep dives into other creators uh comic book creators that is make sure you follow uh subscribe like comment all that fun stuff and again do comment. I would love to see if there's series out there that I'm missing. Now, I am out here comic booking on a budget, so keep that in mind. I can't get literally everything, but I just want to create a community and just bounce ideas and share what we like because comic books are awesome. But yes, thank you all so much, everybody, for watching. And until the next video, I'll catch you all on the flippy flop. Let's chop it up in the comments below. Adios.